Good morning all. So welcome to the new session. Till now we have gone through the Indian art, architecture, sculpture and pottery from the days of Indus Valley Civilization. We covered the Mauryans, we covered the post Mauryans, we covered the golden age of Indian architecture that is the Guptans. We covered the edicts, inscriptions. We also saw the types of stupa features. We saw different school of art and architecture like the Mathura, like the Gandhara. We also saw the different types of temple architecture in India. The North Indian Nagara style of architecture, the South Indian Dravida style of architecture, we saw the cave architecture, we saw the Vesara architecture. So continuing with that, today we will see the temple architecture in South India. In my previous class, I had given an introduction of the Dravida style of architecture and we went through in detail about the North Indian or the Nagara style of architecture. So when we compared the Nagara style of architecture with the Dravidian style of architecture, we could see some major differences which we will see it again here. So try to recollect your memory like what we saw in the Nagara style of architecture and what we are going, what I had taught you or given you an idea of the Dravidian style of architecture. <coughs> you should keep in mind the regional differences. You should also keep in mind the cultural, the linguistic diversities of North and South India. The rulers who are ruling the north and south were different. The civilization was different. So the practices were different. So keeping that in mind, maybe some of the words for you when it comes to the Dravida style of architecture might be quite twisty or you know, you it, it might be difficult for you to pronounce especially if you are from North India or if you are from the Northeastern India. But try to bear it up because it adds beauty to the Indian diversity. So giving you a brief introduction about today's lesson, we will deal with the temple architecture of South India in our lesson today. So moving forward. <laughs> I would ask you to see or observe this image which is in Mahabalipuram. It is called the Ganges rock carvings at Mahabalipuram. See when I, when I taught you about the Nagara style of architecture, I told you that it started from caves. There were cave carvings, there were mural paintings. The same way it came through in the South Indian architecture also. This Mahabalipuram, <coughs> it's on the, it's on the seashore, and if you try to relate to the current affairs, recently in the past few years there was India-China summit in Mahabalipuram where our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji and Xi Jinping, the Chinese Premier had met at Mahabalipuram to exchange the cultural relations which connected the southern Mahabalipuram that is a Tamil Nadu part of India to the China. The, the ruler from Tamil Nadu had gone, travelled long distance to China and spread Buddhism there. So there were, there is a long story behind that. I am just giving you, you can, you can Google and you can search about that. The India-China summit in Mahabalipuram. So this is a seashore city. 
and you can find the rock carvings in this Mahabalipuram which is very very important from your art and architecture point of view from UPSC. The Ganges rock means uh, <coughs> there are different stories behind this Ganges rock. One say that Maharshi Bhagiratha wanted to you know give moksha to his brothers and relatives who had died. So, he wanted to bring Ganges to earth to give them moksha. So, he went on to the to do the tapas or the penance to please Lord Shiva to release Ganges from his head. That is one. The other story is Arjuna did a penance to get the Pashupatastra from Shiva. So, there are, there are different notations, see this, this uh, different notations about different carvings, different temples keep on happening in the, uh, in the history as you have seen. Like today, uh, like <coughs> today we believe Indus Valley civilization uh, discontinued uh, after the floods or the earthquakes and all for mine. But now they say the people moved down to south and they are doing the excavations in Kiladi. There has been a connection and they are saying that the culture which existed in Indus Valley civilization was nothing but the Dravidian civilization. So, this uncertainty, ambiguity keeps on happening in history and other subjects too. So, please keep your mind open and keep on revising your current affairs. The South Indian architecture, temple architecture has been divided into four stages chronologically. Why chronologically? Because Rome was not built in a day. The same way temple architecture did not evolve in a single day. So, there are four categories. The first one is the Mahindra group. The Mahindra group of temple which is found in Mahabalipuram of Tamil Nadu. As the name suggests, Mahindra group was started by Mahindra Varman. Mahindra Varman was a Pallava ruler and he ruled parts of Tamil Nadu see in, in the southern India. In southern India, now if you want to relate also, you can see the movie Ponyan Selvan 1 which has this Chola, Pandya, Pallava uh, relationships. I am saying you, you should, uh, you should have open eyes on everything so that you can relate to your knowledge. The Tamil, the Tamil region was dominated by the Cholas, the Cheras, the Pandyas and the Pallavas in the South India. So, here one ruler, Pallava ruler named Mahendra Varman started to build temples which was known as Mahendra group. It is the first stage of Pallava architecture. So, it all comes under the Dravidian style. So, the, the first stage of this temple architecture under the Pallavas came under this Mahendra Varman who was a Pallava ruler. The temples were basically rock cut temples. As you can see here clearly, they are rock cut. They are not individually built by the rocks or by bricks or by cement or mortar. It is cut by the rock as you saw the cave architecture in North India the same way these rock temples were built or carved from the rocks existing rocks. The temples were known as Mandapas as we call it today temple they used to call them as Mandapas Mandapas. So to summarize there are four categories of uh, development in the Dravidian style of architecture. The first one comes under the Mahendra group which was started by the Pallava ruler Mahendra Varman and this was the first stage of Pallava architecture to start with. It was a rock cut architecture and the temples were called Mandapams. 
So I've given here one example of the Ganges rock carvings in the temples of Mahabali Puram. Clear? Next is the Narasimha group. Actually, the temple has been the temple development has been categorized according to the names of the rajas or the rulers. So the second stage was developed by this king Narasimha Varman. These rock cut temples were decorated by intricate sculptures. Of course, the first stage also had intricate sculptures, but during the time of Narasimha Varman, you had more intricate and decorated sculptures found in the cave architecture or the rock cut architecture. The mantapas, which are the temples we call, were divided into separate rathas. Rathas are chariots. When I was explaining you the cave architecture, I told you that every temple, every place wants to connect itself with Ramayana, Mahabharata, Pandavas, Krishna and other gods. Here too, they are connecting themselves with the Pandavas. So, the mantapas or the temples were divided into different chariots or called Rathas. The Dharmaraja Ratha was the biggest. You know the Pandavas, the five Pandavas and the eldest one was Dharmaraja and his Ratha or the chariot was the biggest. The smallest was Draupadi Ratha who was the concubine or the wife of all the Pandavas. The design of a temple in the Dravidian style of architecture is a successor of the Dharmaraja Ratha. So, the next phases which came after this Narasimha group started to follow the architecture and the developments or the features which was followed in the Dharmaraja Ratha. If you can see here, these are the mantapas. These temples are called mantapas and each temple is a Ratha or a chariot. So, this might be Draupadi Ratha, the biggest one will be the Dharmaraja Ratha, there will be Bhima Ratha, there will be Nakula Ratha, there will be Sah Sahadeva Ratha and the Arjuna Ratha. So what features they followed in the Dharmaraja Ratha, they followed in the next stage of development of temples. To summarize, after the Mahendra group, we get to know about the next stage known as the Narasimha group. Here, the sculptures were more elaborately decorated. The temples which was called Mantapas in the previous stage became divided into Rathas or the chariots. Here we relate to the Panchapandavas of Mahabharata. The Dharmaraja Ratha is the biggest and its architecture has been followed in the successive stage. The Draupadi Ratha is the smallest. So this, this features has been seen in the next phases. <coughs> the next stage or the third stage is called the Raja Simha group of temples. This was all developed during the Pallava times of rule in the South India, in the Tamil region, Tamil Nadu region. This developed under Raja Simhavarman. If you can observe the picture here, which I have given, the Shore Temple of Mahabalipuram, you can find the difference from the last two, right? Here directly the rock has been cut. Here some parts of the rocks have been cut, here it is individually standing. So all are in Mahavalipuram, the Mahavalipuram group of temples and we are seeing the third stage. The development of the real structural temple started in place of rock cut temples. So if you had observed in the last two phases, as I told you, they were rock cut 
and rock built but here it is completely the structural temples which started to be which came to be in practice of construction the example is show temple at mahabalipuram and this is under the ruler rajasimha varman <coughs> now we came or entered into the structural temple phase if you see the next stage under the nandi varman group the vaikunda perumal temple you can see much elaborations and independently built structure i'll just brush you through see here the rock cut development of the temples a bit more independent but still rock cut temples then you see the independent standing or structural temple then you see the completely elongated independently standing rock temples structural temples under the nandi varman group this was the fourth stage under the pallavas group this is found in mahabalipuram a group of temples built under the pallava rulers of tamilagam or tamil nadu the temples were smaller in size and similar to the dravidian style of temple architecture what we see today so to brief an the mahabalipuram group of temples gives you the introduction to the south indian or the dravidian style of architecture and it is divided chronologically under four rulers as i showed you the first one was the mahindra group which saw the rock cut architecture the sculptures which was carved directly from the rock it was elaborate it was elaborate and they cut directly from the rocks the temples were called the mandapas or the mandapas next comes the narasimha group under this the elaborated sculptures or the rock carvings were more elaborated this is the second phase and here the mandapas were divided into rathas the dharmaraja ratha was the biggest and the successor phases followed the features of the dharmaraja ratha the smallest was the draupadi ratha you can see that in the show temples of mahabari puram the next was the rajasimha group where you can see the individual independent structural temples coming up in the show temples of the mahabali puram the last stage was under nandi varman group and the temples were smaller in size but they were independent and structural in construction and these features or under the nandi varman group were very similar to the today's dravidian style of architecture i have given you an example of vaikunda perumal temple clear next the temple architecture acquired a new style under the chola kingdom so till now we saw the pallava style of architecture the group of temples we found in mahabalipuram now the addition came and more features and grandeur was added under the chola kingdom and it became to known as the dravidian style of indian temple architecture the later periods we find the merging of three other style the nayaka style the vesara style and the vijayanagara style see the temple architecture in south india began with the pallava rulers it was added with more features and uh, uh, you know uh, the elaborations and decorations and uh, uh, what not beautifications from the chola rulers later on there were different you know in the local uh, there were different rulers who were ruling uh, the local traditions also emerged with the south indian or dravidian style of architecture which developed under the nayaka style nayaka rulers the vijayanagara uh, rulers and also the vesara style of 
architecture also came under this features. So here you have the Raja Gopuram. So the temples became the symbol of wealth and strength for the rulers, especially during the Chola times. The Raja Gopuram showed that uh, if the height of the Raja Gopuram uh, was measured uh, measured under each ruler to show that he was more great greater than his predecessor. If there was a fight and the fight between two rulers, they used to destroy the temples of the other rulers because it became the power, uh, the center of power and prestige for the ruler. <coughs> Again, uh, you have to see the architecture at Mahabalipuram because it is very, very important from your uh, uh, exam point of view. It was built in the 7th century by the Pallavas. I told you the four stages of Pallava architecture. It was declared as the UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1984. These temples were declared as UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1984 because they have a great amount of contribution to Indian art and architecture which cannot be replaced by any any other thing. It has to be conserved, it has to be you know sustained for our future generations, it is a pride of our civilization. The sites include the Ratha temples or the Pancharathas of the Mahabalipuram, the rock cut caves I showed you in the first phase, the open air rock reliefs and short temple complex which I showed you in the Pallava group of architecture which was found in Mahabalipuram. Clear? The Chola architecture features. This is a Brihadishwara temple at Tanjavur and this is the Raja Gopuram. I told you temple became the centers of power and uh, gravity, prestige and, and uh, you know the seat of knowledge during the Cholas. So the Cholas developed these temples uh, as um, uh, as uh, the uh, you know the seat of assemblies of the different religions to debate on the religious topics there were there were uh, seats of knowledge people used to come from different kingdoms to stay there and study knowledge and uh, religious ceremonies were happening fairs and festivals were happening so the cholas added some salient features to the temples let's see some of them they were surrounded by high boundary walls which is absent in the Nagara style of architecture. Now you might ask me ma'am why they used to surround the temples by high walls? Why the boundary walls was required? I told you these temples were centers of power and richness. The temples had gold, the temples had money, the temple had resources. Do you think the enemy rulers will, who, who just defeat the ruler will not come and attack the temples first? So to protect the temple, to protect their image, to protect themselves, their prestige, their power, they used to build the boundary walls very high around these temples. The front wall had a high entrance and the gateway was known as the Gopuram. This is an important feature of Dravidian style of architecture which was developed under the Cholas. So they had a gateway which we also see in our North Indian temple or the Nagara style of uh, architecture but we do not call it the Gopuram. The Gopuram here, I told you, it, rep it, it shows the power, the greatness of the ruler. So the gateway had high entrance and was known as Gopuram. The Prama is laid out in the Panchayatan style with the principal temple and the four subsidiary shrines which you also see in the Guptan style of architecture which I explained you in the Nagara style of architecture. I told you Panchayatan means there is a principal deity in the center and in the four corners you have a subsidiary deity. The main shrine will be in the middle and 
the subsidiary shrines will be in the four corners. So, this Panchayatan style of architecture was followed even in the Dravidian style of architecture. It symbolizes the Panch Mahabhutas of our Indian philosophy, which I will be taking care in the philosophy class. So, some of the features added by the Cholas in the temple architecture after the Pallava, uh, addition, Pallava development of architecture. We see the high boundary walls around the temples mainly to protect the prestige, power, knowledge and resources of the temple. Second thing, each temple had a gateway and was ha having a you know a high entrance known as Gopuram. You had a premise laid out with the Panchayatan style of architecture. The spire is in the form of a stepped pyramid that raises up linearly rather than curved known as Vimana. The curved tower, I told you, the Nagara style of architecture, it was known as Vimana. The Vimana. The Raja Gopuram, the gateway. This is the tower and it is known as the Vimana. Crowning element shaped in the form of an octagon known as Shikara similar to the Kalash of the Nagara temple but was not spherical. See here, see here this is the, this is the Shikara and this is the Vimana. Clear? You have the Vimana with the Shikara here. It is quite different from the Nagara style of architecture. You have the Maithuna pictures here. The Maithuna pictures from the Kama Sutra, the Kama Sutra which show, which says that human has to experiences, experience all his desires before he enters into the Garbhagriha. The entrance of the Garbhagriha had sculptures of Dwarapalas, Mithunas and Yakshas. You find the Yakshas and Yakshis even in the stupas and uh, other uh, rocket architectures. The Maithunas I told you in uh, the Kajurao group of temples which is also seen in the Nagara style and the Dwarapalakas <coughs> you had seen in the Nagara style of architecture the Ganga and Yamuna but here you have the Dwarapalas. The unique presence of a water tank inside the temple enclosure is absent in the Nagara style of architecture. If you recall, there was no water complexes in the temple premises of Nagara style of architecture. But in the Dravidian style, you have water complexes inside the temple premises. If you recall, in the Indus Valley civilization, you had the great baths. So, don't you think the tradition was similar to the Dravidian style? The Brihadishwara temple at Tanjavur was built by Raja Raja 1 in 1011 AD as a best example of Chola architecture. So, you had the high boundary walls to protect the temple and its resources. You had the Gopuram, the gateways. You have the pyramid style of Shikras, uh, sorry Vimanas and the Kalash which is called as the Shikras and you have the Yakshas, the Yakshis, the Dwarapalas and also the Mithuna which is found in the Nagara style of architecture. The separate or the distinguished feature here is Gopuram I told you and the water tank which is found in the premises of the temple. Please remember this, I have given you an example of Brihadishwara temple at Tanjavur. Please have a look at it. Please have a look at it. You have the Shikaras, you have the Vimana. See how elaborate it is. It was a, it was a symbol of power and prestige for the ruler. It is, it is one of the you know biggest temple in Tamil Nadu. Look 
created the antharala here the connecting mantapa only one vimana top of the main temple subsidiary shrines do not have vimanas i told you the temples were built in panchayatan style means the main principal deity and the four subsidiary deities the vimanas were built only on the principal de principal deity and not on the subsidiary shrines the assembly all connected with the garbha griha by a vestibular vestibular tunnel known as antarala so the garbha griha and the assembly place or the mantapa was connected by one vestibular hall known as antarala this is an addition the high boundary walls is an addition the gateway gopuram is an addition the vimana is an addition the shikara is an addition the existence of a water tank is an addition and you have uh, only uh, the main uh, deity with the vimanas and not the subsidiary deities you have a connection but connecting hall between the mantapa or the assembly place and the garbha griha known as antarala so these are important features so after seeing the pallava architecture after seeing the chola architecture let's go to chola sculptures the cholas were very very famous for their uh, sculptures to give you further knowledge the cholas not only captured the tamil nadu selen uh, tamil nadu region but they also expanded their kingdom to northern selen and also to bali indonesia thailand and other southeast asian nations if you happen to visit some of the southeast asian nations you find the temple architecture which is similar to the dravidian the chola style of architecture in their region the famous temple angkor wat there are many other temples if you if you see visit thailand or other places bali indonesia you will be amazed to see the influence of hinduism or the indian culture in there in those people from the dressing style to their eating style to their worship everything and the language and the literature too has majority influence from india so coming back to chola sculpture look at the nataraja here the god of dance the god of dance an important piece of chola sculpture was the sculpture of nataraja in the tandava dance posture i'll get back to you about the styles of bharatanatyam or the uh, tandava dance form of shiva when i'm teaching you about the classical dances the tandava is the rudra version or the you know uh, the very much angry or violent shiva posture so this is a very famous image sculpture of nataraja the dance god shiva the chola sculpture of nataraja is very very famous upper right hand holds the drum signifi signifying the sound of creation see most of this chola rulers were the shaivites some of them were vaishnavites those times there were uh, religious movements happening in tamil nadu and this religious movements had influenced the karnataka region and also later influenced the north india too so be it the brihadeshwara temple dedicated to shiva or be it other temples they have been major majorly worshiping shiva so here the shiva is treated uh, uh, shiva holds a upper right hand with a drum which signifies the sound of creation the upper left hand holds the eternal fire which represents destruction so shiva is responsible for creation he is responsible for destruction too and he is responsible for sustaining the life too so they used to make a metal alloys copper and other metals and they used to make the sculptures mainly based on the shaiva and the vaishnava cult of hinduism the chola sculpture of nataraja 
who is the god of dance is very very important because it ha it is very famous all over the world if you happen to see the recent news there has been the demand for the bringing back of the indian arch uh, stolen artifacts and sculpture from different nations so here the lower right hand of shiva is raised in the gesture of abhaya mudra signifying the benediction reassures the devotee to not to be afraid so shiva is saying i may be in the tandava rupa like i am very violent i am destroying someone here there is a there is an asura shiva is destroying him shiva is dancing on him shiva is showing it is uh, uh, is dancing in the ring of fire he is showing the destruction or the creation sound of creation but he is also showing here in the abhaya mudra showing his devotee please don't be afraid i am there to protect you are you getting my point lower left hand points towards the upraised foot indicates the path of salvation if you see here the shiva is showing his hand down the ones who surrender to me will be given salvation or moksha so he is the creator he is the sustainer he is the destroyer and he is the giver he is the giver of salvation he is assuring his devotees i am there for you at any time he is showing in the left hand that the ones who surrender to me will be given salvation so this is the significance of this chola nataraja nataraja sculpture of cholas so this is the abhaya mudra which says a surety for the uh, devotees of shiva not to worry about anything Shiva is dancing on the figure of a small dwarf a dwarf symbolizes ignorance and the ego of an individual if you see here it is a dwarf it is called mura he is an asura it shows ignorance disbelief and absent mindedness your you should overcome your ego overcome your ignorance so that you come under my surrender and i will bless you with salvation is the significance the matted and flowing locks of shiva represent the flow of river ganges look at the look at the hairs of shiva it shows the flowing of river ganges if you see the uh, river ganges image of bhagiratha in a uh, penance of bhagiratha in mahabalipuram temple you will find the prayer of bhagiratha to bring ganges from to earth from the from the head of shiva so here it shows the vibrance or the flow of ganga which is heavenly are you getting my point the chola sculpture of shiva the god of dance is very very important because most of the pallavas the chola and the pandya rulers were the worshippers of shiva and it shows that shiva is the creator he is the sustainer he is the destroyer and he is also the giver of moksha the ring represents the fire you cannot escape from shiva the world shiva has created and the creation of sound from is damaruga and it is showing that if you give up your ego if you give up your ignorance and surrender to my feet i am going to assure you with salvation and with this abhaya mudra he is showing his devotees and assuring them no need to worry and i will be there to protect you and his hairs shows the vibrance or the flow of river ganga from the heaven sol uh, like you know a papanashini 
means she is you know uh, f uh, flowing out all your miseries and whatever uh, uh, bad things you have done and gives you salvation this is the significance of the Skola, uh, Chola sculpture of Nataraja which is very very famous and very important from your prelims point and also mains point of view. So moving ahead we see one ear of Shiva as a, a male earring while the other has a female earring which represents the fusion of male and female and is often referred to as Ardhanarishwar. The Ardhanarishwar uh, sculpture of Shiva is also very famous in the Chola sculpture. Here you can find one ear with male earring and the other ear with the female earring showing the significance. Each man has aspects of women, aspects of men. Each woman has aspects of men, aspects of women. It signifies that no one is you know supreme than the other both are equal and both are dependent on each other there may be physical differences but each person each individual will have the male characteristics as well as the female characteristics that's why the Ardhanarishwar concept Nataraja surrounded by a nimbus of glowing lights which symbolizes the vast unending cycles of time if you see here the vast circle which is of lights and fire it shows that life is never ending energy is neither created nor destroyed the same way life is not created nor destroyed it is revolving around the circular path the one who is up will come down the one who is down will come up so that philosophy of Shiva is depicted in this Ardhanarishwar as well as the sculpture of Shiva. So I told you in the beginning itself the sculpture, the dance forms, the architecture simply is not just constructed or made. They symbolizes or signify something. So hope you have understood that significance. It was the Vesara school or the Karnataka school of architecture. So till now we saw the Pallava group of architecture which was formed in the Mahabalipuram. We found the Chola uh, temples which, is, which has all the salient features of the Dravidian style of architecture. We also saw the Chola sculpture of Nataraja and Ardhanarishwara. I told you there were other local schools or the local rulers kingdoms who also developed the temple architecture which later merged into the Dravidian school of architecture. The first one is the Vesara school or the Karnataka school. Look at the temple here. Not a single single place is left engraved or carved. This is the Chennakeshava temple at the Somanathapura. Look at the temple here. Look how, how neatly they have carved, not an inch has been left. It looks so grander and uh, the POZ Brown, he, a French, uh, French person, archaeologist, he said it is the cradle of temple architecture. This Vesara school of architecture was conceptualized by the later Chalukya rulers in the mid 7th century AD. It combined the features of the Nagara and the Dravidian school. So they did not have the prominent features of only the Dravidian or only the Nagara style. But they took the good elements of the north as well as the south. So in the Vesara style, in the multiple statement question if they ask, the Vesara style of architecture combines the elements of the Nagara style as well as the Dravidian style of architecture. It was developed by the Chalukyan kings of Karnataka region in the 7th century AD. You can see that in the Chennakeshava temple at Somanathapura in Karnataka. The three prominent or the important dynasties who made Vesara style temples are Chalukyas of Badami and Kalyani. See the Chalukya rulers they had a discontinuity. So the Chalukyas of Badami was the first one and there was a discontinuity and there came the Chalukyas of Kalyani but they belong to the same clan. 
so the first kingdom was the chalukyas of badami and kalyani next was the rashtrakutas then the hoysala dynasty so these three kingdoms they ruled in the karnataka region and they contributed to the development of the vaisara style of architecture <coughs> So let's see the Vijayanagara style of architecture. You people have known about Hampi. The stone chariot temple of Hampi was very very famous. So the Vijayanagara school of architecture uh, has also been asked in your prelims question many a times. The rulers of the Vijayanagara Empire from 1335 to 1565 gave a lot of uh, contributions to art and architecture and also you know uh, the administration in the South India. They were one of the last rulers of Hindu kingdom in Hindu in the South India. Very significant contribution. They combined the features of the Cholas, the Hoysalas, Pandyas, Chalukyas, architectural styles. So they took all the good elements from all their pre uh, predecessors. The Cholas, the Hoysalas, the Pallavas, whoever came before them, they took all the good elements from all these uh, rulers and they incorporated in the Vijayanagara style of architecture. They were also influenced by the Indo-Islamic style of Bijapur. See, by the time of Vijayanagara came to power, there was the advent of Islamist in the north, north India. It also had penetrated to the South India. There were Bijapur Sultans. There were Hyderabad Nizams. So this also influenced the Vijayanagara style of architecture. So not only the Dravidian style developed by Cholas were influenced, but they were also influenced by the Indo-Islamic styles of the Bijapur. The walls of the temples were highly decorated with carvings and geometrical pattern. You can also find some mural paintings in the Vijayanagara style of architecture. The mural paintings of Vijayanagara is quite different from what you saw in the Ajanta Ellora cave architecture but there has been architectural significance there the gopurams were now built on all the sites the gateways the gateways which was only found in the front of the temple was seen in the four sites of the temples in the vijayanagara temples please recall the chola architecture <laughs> where you find the Gopurams only in the entrance but in the Vijayanagara you find in all, all the corners. The temple pillars have a mythical creature Yali which is the horse engraved. It shows that the stability of the kingdom is unshakable. The pillars have the dignity and stability. So that is seen in the pillars of the temples of Vijayanagara. They have larger enclosing walls which we commonly see in the Dravidian style of architecture. There were more than one mandabs. I told you the Panchayatan school of architect Panchayatan style of architecture was followed and here too there were more than one mandabs. Central Mantap was known as Kalyana Mantap. This was a question in your prelims. Kalyana Mantap feature was an addition of which rulers to the Dravidian style of architecture? That was the contribution of Vijayanagara. Kalyana Mantap was used as a ceremonial place in the temples of Vijayanagara. So look at this Kalyana Mantap. Here they used to be weddings taking place or dance or music or some uh, dramas which will be taking place and this was an addition of Vijayanagara rulers to the Dravidian style of architecture. Look at the Virupaksha temple in Hampi. It was such an elaborate structure and it has a bar, uh, like a high boundary walls. You have the Raja Gopuram. You have the Vimana, you have the Shikara, you have a water tank inside the temple 
and you have the Gopuram and the Mantupas. The introduction of the concept of secular buildings inside this temple uh, was started in the Vijayanagara school of architecture. I told you at this time of uh, 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 this time of Vijayanagara rule, there were advent of Islamists in India. You can also see the influence of Christianity with the arrival of Portuguese. The Portuguese people used to trade with the Vijayanagara rulers. So, inside the temple complex, you have the secular features. The Portuguese influence is also seen in the temple architecture of Vijayanagaras. You will be amazed to see that. The temple complex enclosed by boundaries. The famous examples are Vittala Swami Temple, Virupaksha Temple in Ampi, Raghunatha Temple in Hampi. So these were all, you know, blending the architecture styles of the previous rulers and making them their own style. Okay. The Hoysala Hat, the Chennakeshwar Temple you found at Somanathapura. I told you not a single rock has been left by the sculptor, not untouched. Such is the beauty of the temples. And it is found in Somanathapura of Karnataka. Between 1050 and 1300 AD, the important seats being Belur, Halebidu, and Shrangeri, which is the Malnad region of Karnataka, were dominated by these Hoysala rulers who gave a great contribution to temple architecture, mainly the sculptural part. Multiple shrines built around the central pillared hall. So till now you find the Panchayatan style but in the Hoysala style you find multiple deities around the principal deity. The shrines laid out in the shape of an intricately designed star known as stellate pattern. The star pattern, the temple were built on star pattern, star pattern platform. That was a very unique feature of this Hoysala style. In the Vijayanagara, you have the Kalyana Mantapa. The stellate plan of temple was found in the Hoysala architecture. The material used was soft soapstone, corite cyst. Means they used to, you know, carve very, very beautifully and intricately. So they wanted some soft stone. So they used the soft soapstone here. It was locally available. Immense importance on the decoration of the temple through sculptures was done here. I told you uh, too much of decoration, too much of carvings. All the chambers at Shikaras. There were multiple mantapas, multiple Shikaras and built on a star based platform. Elevated platform known as Jagati. Appraised platform star platform and too much of sculptures and carvings. This was the feature of Hoysala style of architecture. See, Hoysala style is very, very important. I'll just give you again a brief. Between 1050 and 1300 AD, in the Karnataka region, especially in the Malnad region, you find this Hoysala rulers coming up. The important features of this temple is grand and decorative sculptures and carvings. There were a lot of mantapas, lot of shikaras. Upraised platform and stellate pattern or star pattern uh, platform was there uh, on which the temples were constructed. A lot of intricate carvings. They used soapstone, soft soapstone which was locally available in the Karnataka region. Let's move on to the Pala and Sena school of Bengal. See the temples, don't you find quite different? Isn't it quite different? It was developed between 8th and 12th century AD. It has influence of both Hinduism and Buddhism. The Palas were Buddhist rulers and the Senas were Hindus. 
so in the bengal region in the assam region you find this bengal school or the pala and sena school of architecture they have the influence of hinduism as well as buddhism buddhism is because palas were buddhist rulers and senas were hindu rulers the monuments under the pala rulers are the universities of nalanda and vikrama shila the monuments under the sena rulers dakshishwari da dakeshwari temple in bangladesh actually prem uh, narendra modi had visited this dakeshwari temple when he had visited bangladesh there was a uh, bilateral relations talks that time he had visited this dakeshwari temple which is based on the sena rulers art and architecture the buildings had a curve or sloping roof called as bangla roof later adopted by the mogul architects they have this carved see the carving roof this was later adopted by the mughals carving roof it carves this was later adopted by mughals burnt bricks and clay known as terracotta bricks were used in the construction of the temples of pala and sena they had tall curving shikara crowned by a large amalaka similar to the odisha school since it is very similar to odisha odisha region they have this amalaka as shikara in their temple architecture stone the major component and metal was used look at the sideshwara maha temple in barakar look at look at the shikara and the vimana here don't you think it's different from the south and the dravidian style of architecture look at the amalaka and the kalash the kalash in the south is different than the amalaka here isn't it similar to the puri jagannath temple the figures are high lustrous finish and they used black color it is quite black because of the humidity sideshwara mahadev temple in barakar so yes we will have a recapitulation of all what we learned today i'll just give you a recap of what all we have learned today just a 5 minutes because we discussed a lot so to we discussed here the temple architecture in south india the first we saw the mahabali group of temples which was having four different categories the mahendra group which saw the rocket architectures and the sculptures and it was the first stage of pallava uh, temple uh, building and it was basically rock cut example and the temples were known as mantapas i gave you the example of ganges rock carvings at mahabali puram the second was narasimha group it was also rocket cave temples at mahabali puram but what it was uh, like a more decorative and elaborately decorated the temples or the mantaps were divided into rathas the dharmaraja ratha was the biggest and the panchali or the draupadi ratha was the smallest the dharmaraja uh, ratha features were followed in the successive stages of de temple development next was rajasimha group it was developed under rajasimha varman a uh, pallava ruler it was the stage of development of real structural temples in in place of rock cut temples you can see that in the shore temples of mahabalipuram and uh, the vaikunda perumal temple is a fully established or a structural temples under the pallava group of architecture which was developed under nandi varman group the temples were smaller in size we saw the uh, uh, you know additions of uh, features under the chola uh, rulers for the dravidian style of architecture uh, the three other styles also amalgamated later the vesara style nayaka style and vijayanagara style also came to it you can see the rajagopuram it was built in the 7th century by the pallavas uh, the pallava uh, mahabali puram temples in the 7th century by the pallavas it's it was declared a unesco world heritage site in 1984 and you have the ratha temples pancharatha rocket caves open air rock and show temple complex 
the uh, chola temples have this high boundary walls you have the front wall with a high entrance gateway known as the gopurams you have a premise laid out in the panchayatan style with a principal deity in the center and the four subsidiary deity in the other corners the spire you know you saw the pyramid it is known as vimana the crowning element shaped in uh, uh, in octagon shape known as the shikara which is similar to the kalash and the amlaka of the nagara style of architecture the entrance of garbhagriha sculptures of dwarapalas yakshas yakshis and the mithunas the unique feature is the presence of water tank which is absent in the nagara style of architecture example the brihadeshwara temple at tanjavur built by raja raja 1 in 1011 ad only one vimana was there the subsidiary shrines did not have the vimanas the assembly hall was connected with the garbhagraha through a vestibular assembly known as antarala it's an addition of the chola style of architecture and in uh, like coming to the chola sculpture i discussed two that is the nataraja sculpture and the ardhanarishwara temple the nataraja a uh, sculpture is very famous because shiva is in the tandava posture in a very violent uh, form and he is saying that i am the creator of the sound i am the destroyer of violence and uh, ignorance and ego of every individual and you have to surrender to me to attain the salvation or moksha and his airs are shown the vibrance of ganga and he is also giving the abhaya or the assurance to his devotees that i am there for you to protect and in the ardhanarishwara i told you like the each individual has a male and a female attribute so no one is higher no one is lower so both have to be supportive and dependent on each other okay and uh, the vesara school of architecture i told you it combines the features of nagara and the uh, dravidian style of architecture three important dynasties the chalukyas of badami al kalyani uh, rashtrakutas and uh, the hohoisalas the rulers of vijayanagara developed this vijayanagara school of architecture they combined the features of cholas hoisalas pandyas chalukyas etc they were also influenced by the indo islamic style of architecture because of the advent of the arab people arab conquest the walls of the temples obviously had the high carvings and geometrical patterns and gopurams were now built on all sides the temple pillars had mythical creature yali or the horse engraved to show the stability of the kingdom larger enclosing walls as we see in the chola style of architecture more than one mantap but in the chola only one mantap central mantap was known as kalyan mantap it was an addition of vijayanagara style of architecture where ceremonies like dance uh, theater and uh, wedding ceremonies used to take place in the kalyan mantap the introduction of the concept of secular buildings inside the temple because of the advent of europeans and also the islamic uh, influence in south india temples were enclosed by boundaries to protect them hoysala style of architecture i told you not a single stone was untouched by the sculptor intricate designs decorative it was it was surrounded by central pillared hall shrines were laid out in a stellate or star pattern under a praised platform and all chambers had shikaras immense importance on the decoration of the temple through sculptures they used soft soap stone there for the decoration the pala and sena school we saw in the eastern side of india the bengal style between 8th and 12th century ad it had influence of hinduism and buddhism the hinduism because of the sena rulers and the buddhism because of the pala rulers uh, you have uh, see that time bengal was not just bengal it was uh, also including bangladesh so you have the dakeshwari temple in bangladesh the roofs were known as bangla roofs they were curved and it was later taken by the uh, mughal rulers burnt bricks and terracotta bricks were used and they had amalakas figures also had lustrous finish so thank you so much we saw the complete temple architecture here so we will see the next development of architecture in india after this 
in our next class. Thank you so much.